So Bob and I are in the Pine Barrens today, and today we're going to be checking out two ghost towns. Um, right now we are in the ghost town of Harrisville, and right in front of me here are some ruins. Let me show you. And these are the ruins of a paper mill. So Harrisville was built in the late 1700s and this whole area here used to be a village. Um, one place I read online it was it had 75 residents at one time. Uh, there used to be the paper mill which is right in front of us, a grist mill, um, I believe a sawmill, and a blast furnace. Uh, so we're gonna be making our way around today. We are giving our new new toys a try and uh, <clears throat> we're going to be to the street in a couple minutes um, to the Bass River the Bass River side uh, we're gonna see if we can see Martha's furnace and then we're gonna make our way to another ghost town so stay tuned with this adventure all right so we're taking a little stop a little break in the Pine Barrens we actually uh, try buying this so uh, we're gonna keep going. All right, so now we are at the area of Martha's Furnace. One of the indicators of the area is this tree. His poor, poor tree. I'm not exactly sure why someone did that, but um, a lot of people post pictures of that tree. So let's see if we can actually see Martha's Furnace. Alright, so it doesn't look like there's much there's anything left of the furnace other than this big gaping hole and a man made mound. So this was the site of Martha's furnace. <clears throat> I don't see anything left of it. I mean, there's indicators such as this mound and the big gaping hole, but other than that, I'm not seeing anything. Let's see. Interesting. So we're like literally in the middle of the Pine Barrens. And it's some kind of witch's tree. Yep, because all that stuff was carved before the tree died because it started growing back around everything. Oh, good point. Whoever made that made it why the tree was still alive. So now we're in an area where it looks like they did a control burn 
I'll show you. See the trees are charred on this side, but if you look on this side, it's not, it's not burned. Actually, these things are very healthy for the forest. What it does is it gets a lot, gets rid of a lot of um, invasive species. Um, and it just, it's all around good. Right, Bob? Sure. <laughs> no, it's actually really good because it gets rid of the vines and stuff that actually chokes out the trees. Let me see if we can, there we go. I remember one time I burned my butt and tell me that was a learning experience. Oh, dear Lord. Well, anyway, see, on this side, it's still early spring and everything's already being choked out by weeds. So, it's good stuff, actually. Alright, so here's the deal. It is starting to threaten to rain, and I don't know how these uh, bikes do when they get wet, and since they're still pretty new, um, we didn't take the chance, so what we did is we loaded them up and uh, actually came down a dirt road. It was a, it's a nice dirt road, uh, directly to the ghost town of Friendship. Now the reason why we decided to load them up is because um, according to the According to the GPS, uh, it was still an hour away where we were at. Um, but either or, we still got a good ride in the Pine Barrens and we hit to the ghost town. So what was the town of Friendship? Well, it was actually the largest cranberry bog community at one time. So we have these cool, cool, cool uh, cellar remnants all around here. And I do believe this ghost town is from the late 1700s. So this one must have been pretty large actually. There's like foundation all over the place over here. Here's some brickwork. And here's a foundation up here of something. So I worked my way to this other one and talk a little bit about the way in. So um, GPS coordinates, uh, Friendship Historic Ruins, and it brings you right to it. Uh, the dirt road is nice and wide. Um, we are in the area where the sand is starting to get soft and it's really not anything for the Acadia to go through. So. But look at this, hold on. Wow. So we're gonna be, I'm gonna be walking 
the cranberry bog area. I mean, you can't really call it an abandoned cranberry bog, but um. And what is also cool is coming down this road, you have trees all over the place. Then you have this big eye, then you have this big wide opening. Just. Oh wow, this is actually huge! I wonder what this was. So one of the issues with this area is that, um, disrespectful off-roaders, I should say, um, because I, I do like off-roading, but we respect, um, the off-roaders actually come through these ruins. These ruins are from the late 1700s, early 1800s, and they just drive right through them. So don't, don't be that idiot. All right, so I'm not sure if this was one of the cranberry bogs or if this is a natural bog. Well, I guess all bogs start natural at one point. But, um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm not a cranberry uh, bog historian here. It's something new to me, let's say. I don't really know a lot about it. Definitely something for me to look up when I get home. And the wind. The wind, the wind, the wind. The wind, the wind, the wind. Okay, so, let me get by the vehicle real quick. Um, hi. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna end this adventure with the Harrisville, uh, paper mill, which was a part of the Harrisville ghost town, and <laughs> what are you doing? And Martha's Furnace, which really there really wasn't anything left, and a ghost town of friendship. Uh, this is actually really cool. This is my first time here. Um, I didn't expect to see all this stuff. So, until next time, see y'all later. See y'all later. Bye.